Wonder who that is? Ah, a drag man, Billy Porter, enjoying a Christian song performed by Kirk Franklin and Maverick City. The industry, I can't, I can't do it. It's not godly. God didn't establish, establish the music industry. He didn't establish the gospel music industry. It's an industry. It's just, and to, to, to make music and to use the gift God gave you and to put all your blood, sweat, and tears. I know I sound like every other artist, but you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it. You put excellence into it. You, you know what I mean? The Lord gives you a gift and you want to give it back to him and point it back to him. And then you got to place this baby called a song into the hands of a godless industry. In most worship services today, in modern day evangelicalism, if you were all of a sudden in the middle of a song to pull the plug on all the instrumentation, all the microphones and everything, you would find that the congregation is hardly singing. We very often become worshipers of ourselves. We're not worshiping God. We're simply worshiping the feeling that we're having about God. When it comes to the issue of music, it's one of those areas where, you know, the, the battle is likely to continue until the Lord comes home. What we have done is we have elevated music to, it seems to be, a place above the teaching of the scriptures. Music and worship has three purposes codify, unify, glorify. That gets the gist. That the purpose of music in the worship of God is to codify the truth so that it can be sung to the glory of God down through the generations. Contemporary Christian music has deteriorated into entertainment devoid of the gospel message. Gone are the days when godly men and women sang praise and worship songs to God, adoring and exalting the name of the one true God, Jesus Christ. Hey Love, a Christian radio station, has progressively fallen into the enemy's trap by promoting several ungodly musicians. Hey guys, Brandon Willem, CCM Magazine, hanging out in Nashville, Kayla Fan Awards with Dante Bo. Now I can say the Grammy winning Dante Bo. I'm excited to just see the performers tonight, so yeah. Who are you looking forward to seeing perform? Uh, is Lil Nas X, Lil Nas X performing tonight? Yeah, I'm looking it. forward to seeing that, that's going to be cool probably. Yeah. 21 year old rapper Lil Nas X timed the release of his newest video with the launch of a pair of sneakers, and both have made headlines. The three-minute, ten-second music video for Montero, Call Me By Your Name, shows the rapper in a fantasy world, tempted by a serpent, then banished to hell. Blood Sneakers, Lil Nas X's collaboration with art collective Mischief, were released the same day as the video. The 666 pair of sneakers are black with red trim, and feature gold pentagrams, inverted crosses, as well as human blood inside the soul. Maverick City Music Group's Chandler Moore and Naomi Rain teamed with a secular artist in this musical performance. They did not sing a gospel song, but a secular piece by P. Daddy, with whom Bishop T.D. Jakes also hangs around. If you listen to the lyrics and see the video in the background, you would hear them say, I know I'll see you again, Big, referring to the notorious B.I.G. You must realize how dangerous this is. Satan employs Christian artists to blur the line between the holy and the profane. Once the line is blurred, Christians will readily accept music and musicians they would have previously rejected. Folks, we are living in dangerous times. For several years, we listened to and supported Caleb financially. Sadly, this radio station has gradually moved mainstream over the years. Jesus has become a footnote that satisfies their critics while giving their audience the idea that they are all about the gospel. I just got off the call with, with, with um, you know, a business call, and, it, and it's like, I'm not selling out, y'all, I'm sorry. It's like, yo, your song is hot, da 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 If you do this, we can get you, I was like, yo, man. I was like, nah. I literally just hung up on the call. I literally like, hey y'all, I can't do this right now. I know it's, it's really all about the money and I, I ain't selling out like that, y'all. So uh, uh, I'm out. What I mean all about the money is, like if you got money, you can get certain platforms, period. If not, you gotta do certain things to get that platform and make certain compromises. But I, I can't compromise, man, I can't sell out. I Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share.
God bless you. K-Love openly and unapologetically promotes men and women who have no fear of God. They have the form of God, but deny the power thereof, according to 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. Otherwise, why would Caleb allow Kirk Franklin to perform at any of their events? This man openly mocks God. Music rides the back of the culture in whatever direction it is going. Music in our day is dominated by the rapidly degenerating corruption of our society. It is riding the culture's corruption down. We have to go back sometimes decades maybe centuries, to find music that endures because of its quality, its elevation, its dignity, its excellence. With the decline and the debasing of music has come the decline of musicianship. We are a sensual culture, and that's where our music is taking us. And y'all pray for people, man. I mean, it's it's a crazy dance. It's a crazy dance to hold on to your integrity, to hold on to your convictions, and then to be in this world, but not of it. It's a challenge to not be of it. It depends on how ambitious you are. It depends on how how much you desire it. Nah, I don't desire it that bad. People know, artists know what I'm talking about. Labels know what I'm talking about. Uh, PR, everybody who's in the industry know what I'm talking about. And I'm not hating on nobody. I'm just not willing to do certain things. Hopefully, you are starting to understand why K-Love continues to play songs from some quote-unquote Christian artists with ungodly and questionable characters. It has become all about business and money, and no longer about glorifying God and uplifting and edifying the body of Christ. Some artists question the Bible and its stance on homosexuality, yet K-Love has refused to stop playing their music. Focusing on positive and encouraging messages devoid of biblical truth is nothing but lukewarm Christianity, which is not Christianity at all. Jesus never said the world would like you if you spoke the truth in love. The opposite is true. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Matthew 10 verse 22. Caleb has refused to take a stand on biblical truth because they don't want to be hated or accused by the world. This may explain why Caleb refused to promote the unplanned movie that exposed how dangerous and horrific abortion is. Their sloppy reason for not promoting the film was because they promote only positive and encouraging messages, and because unplanned was rated R. Interestingly enough, Caleb promoted The Passion of the Christ, which was rated R. This shows that this radio station is unwilling to stand for anything controversial. Unplanned, the movie about Planned Parenthood clinic director turned pro-life leader Abby Johnson hits the big screen next week. But this week, it hit Hollywood's red carpet. Pro-lifers and stars poured into Los Angeles, California for the Hollywood premiere. Unplanned tells the story of how and why Abby Johnson left Planned Parenthood. It's based on her book of the same name. The MPAA gave the film an R rating for three objectionable scenes involving abortion. In response, dozens of Christian leaders, ranging from former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece, Alveda King, have written an open letter to people of faith, encouraging them to see the film and highlighting that it contains no nudity or profanity. The Christian leaders wrote in part, We, the undersigned, are urging our fellow citizens to, just as they did with the Passion of the Christ, ignore the MPAA's restricted rating and watch the film anyway. Why should a Christian radio station fail to promote a movie about the sanctity of life but has no issue promoting demonic Halloween? Something has really gone wrong with Caleb. To be clear, the purpose of this video is not to bash Caleb, but rather to point out significant issues we see, and the direction this station is going should give any Christian a reason to be concerned. Because we have dumbed down the gospel, because we're not preaching the true gospel, and we are using carnal means to attract people. If you use carnal means to attract men, you're going to attract carnal men and you're going to have to keep using greater carnal means to keep them in the church. We are a people who are strong in the arm of the flesh. We are the people who are always looking and desiring to figure out a new way to do something. And, and that has affected our evangelism, it's affected our church life, but it's affected our worship. How do we make people evangelize? 
How do we make people come to church? How do we make people worship? There's only one way. They must be regenerate. They must be filled with the Holy Spirit, and they must be growing in maturity. If you're going to throw that reality out, then you're going to have to come in with a new invention to prop the whole thing up. And I think that worship today has been influenced more than any other thing by our culture of, en of entertainment. Days are gone when Christian artists wrote songs that elevated Jesus Christ and pointed sinners to Jesus. Lauren Daigle, a famous Christian artist, has won the K-Love Fan Award a few times, yet she doesn't even know what the Bible says about the sin of homosexuality. Do you feel that homosexuality is a sin? You know, I, I can't honestly answer on that in the sense of I have too many people that I love that they are homosexual. Um, I don't know. I actually had a conversation with someone last night about it, and I was like, I can't say one way or the other. I, I'm i not God. So when, yeah. people, when people ask questions like that, that's what my go-to is. Like, I just say read the Bible and find out for yourself. Because, and when you find out, let me know, because I'm learning too. Is this someone you can trust to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ? Kirk Franklin openly mocks Jesus by declaring that the lion and the lamb, which every Christian recognizes as Jesus Christ, will submit to the goat, an occult symbol for Satan. I was a dirty dish, now me and God in sync, like Big and Jay and Nas, the great escape of both. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Why does Caleb allow this man to perform at any events of their event if they genuinely care about the gospel? Knowing that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to love and see each other. The love you well you I have uh, been in recent, the last two years, with a group of young people, but they come out of contemporary evangelicalism. When we're in our worship service, you see that they really don't sing with great zeal. They've been raised in a Christianity where it has a music director, a music band, a worship team that does almost everything. Combined with that and the culture of entertainment, they've been taught to come into church and watch other people do their worship for them. Skillet is another contemporary Christian band that K-Love promotes. We don't even advocate searching for their songs because the imagery in their music videos is filled with horror and darkness. Unfortunately, this band is virtually indistinguishable from secular satanic rock bands. Despite this, their lead singer professes to be a Protestant Christian. This is what deception looks like. Most Christians would dismiss what the group represents because the band professes to be Christian and mentions Jesus' name. But I know that Christ can fix it. I know that Christ can heal it. He yes. is He's the great healer. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is the comforter, is what the Bible says. So um, I think people... They, they, they hear what I say, I think they go, yeah, that, I feel that way too. And you're winning because of that book, but what do you think that the message is that so many people mm -hmm. have grabbed onto while reading it? I think that what people are discovering is, um, again, pro probably, probably old wisdom. I think they're going, they're realizing, we thought there was going to be a new answer, like a new diet fad, right? Yes. You always think there's going to be a new diet fad. And if I take that pill, then I don't have to do 100 crunches a day. Right. No, you got to do 100 crunches today if yeah. you're going to fit in that outfit. <laughs> I think people want something new, and they're realizing that they've been, they've been lied to. They've been sold something that's fake. It's not real. But the words of Christ never change. And when you, when you go back to that, you come back into that peace it's because it's you're not thrown to and fro in every wave of doctrine, right? Because mm -hmm. you're on the words of Christ, and it feels so wonderful to have the peace of Christ. It is yeah. Music is designed in the church for one purpose, and that is to glorify God. Worship is when believers, because of what's in their heart, in the knowledge of the truth, are given an opportunity to express that in beautiful tunes and beautiful lyrics collectively and all of it is offered to God. When your songs appeal to both Christians and non-Christians, something is wrong. Do you know why? A song that glorifies God and God alone will convict sinners to repent and give glory to God.
For the most part, this is what Caleb now represents. You know, people ask, what are the great errors in worship, modern worship, contemporary worship, that those who declare that they believe in the inerrancy of Scripture have not proven by their actions that they believe in the sufficiency of Scripture that everything that is done in the church and in Christian life must be done according to the scriptures, conform to what is written. If we're really gonna be honest about the subject, we have to admit that music is one of the central battlegrounds of worship. It's a tough one because the Bible doesn't say, thou shalt not listen to this song. What the Bible gives us is principles about the holiness of God, about the nature of worship. Insofar as we're introducing elements into our worship through music which are unholy, which are flesh-centered, which turn our worship into mantras and repetitions as opposed to substantial declarations like the ones we find in the Psalms about the living God, we're gonna be missing the mark. And the, the problem is, like a delicious bowl of Captain Crunch cereal, if you keep feeding that to a child, they're gonna keep loving it, but it doesn't make it healthy for them. And so we have an entire generation of children that are being spoon-fed Captain Crunch theology in their worship service, and it's toxic. It's literally changing their appetites to like things which are unholy and unhealthy for them. Singing the Psalms, speaking basic truths, singing with holiness without all the trappings that the world has in a way that we are really lifting up our hearts before God and not simply being caught up into an emotional frenzy that's not going to lead us to the proper worship of Christ. Contemporary Christian music has become commercialized. Those who pay to get noticed have their song top the music charts, whether they honor God or not. But those who sing praise and worship songs that focus on God are ignored. The days ahead may be dark, but let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10, verse 23.